I'm observing these cells, and there's some very advanced growth. They seem to be evolving at an alarming rate. It's... it's incredible. I can't help wondering, what will they become? Hello UT and hello the world, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas. Technology has made it a much smaller world. Thanks to innovations in communication, we can now ignore emails sent from friends across the globe. But technology has also made it easier to see the microscopic world right under our noses. Today, we're talking about microscopy. Oh no, no, not my doctor. Microscopy is the field of using microscopes to look at objects that can't be seen with the naked eye. There we go. In traditional microscope optics, scientists would have to fix, stain, and kill cells in order to see them in contrast with their background. When something the color of water is placed in water, it can be very difficult to see. If a piece of cellophane were a cell, and you were to place that on the surface of a placid lake, you'd be a litter bug and shame on you. But you also wouldn't have the contrast to see the cellophane very well. Well, scientist Jeffrey Kuhn and his team here at UT have been developing a new way to look at cells without killing them, using a polarized lighting system that fits on top of existing microscope technology. But how is this done? We're changing the, the type of light that's passed through the specimen, and we're doing it extremely quickly. And we're taking a bunch of images as we change that information through, and we're using computer processing to pull out the stuff that interacts with that polarized light in unique ways. When I think of cellular photography, I'm usually on Instagram. But this type of cellular photography is done by passing very specific spectrums of polarized light through cells very quickly, and then using software to translate that data into moving images of cells that we've never even seen before. So what are some of the challenges of this type of microscopy? Cells move slowly, but they do move. And within a second, you might have, you know, when you're talking about a microscope, it might move a micron a second, but when you're looking, when you're magnifying that much, one little tiny movement is big when you're magnifying an image, right? So you have to take all that information. If you're going to compare a bunch of frames, you need to take those, those frames extremely quickly. This new system uses an incredibly bright lighting apparatus, but many of the components were actually 3D printed, making testing this proof of concept very quick and inexpensive. Two things as elusive to science is dark matter and adequate whiteboard space. So what are some of the applications of this new system, and what are your plans going forward? Ultimately, what I'd what we'd love to do is maybe start a company to build modules that initially that could, people could add to their scopes and get these into the hands of researchers that could take advantage of them. Because having people bring their biological samples here because they're living, you need to have, you need to manipulate them and then bring them on the microscope. Even walking your sample across campus won't work. We need to get this into the hands of researchers drug companies, the CDC, they've, we've got some interest from um, and looking at virus particles. This new optic system has the potential to change the way we fight disease and work with nanotechnology, which is very exciting. Who knows, thanks to Jeff and his team, we might soon see one of these moving cells as the next Vine celebrity. <laughs> I'm just kidding. People on Vine aren't celebrities. But if you'd like to know more about this story, please click on the link below and subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, because we'd really, really like that. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas, reminding you, stay hooked.